I was sitting in that same small group where Joan and I attend together and our teacher, this was weeks later, he got right to the point of the Good Samaritan story. Well, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I thought, whew, I know that story. Okay, now, what should we do for lunch? Should we go out or do I have enough leftovers? And I wonder if I need to help Connor with his homework and man, I better get milk. Or did Phil get milk yesterday? And my mind was anywhere <laughs> but with the Good Samaritan. And I caught myself. And um, I, I asked the Lord, help me to be present right here in this story. And that's how I, um, how I like to read scripture and listen to scripture, is to ask God to help me to be present within it. Like, who am I in this story? Where do I fit into this story? And so that's what I asked the Lord to do. And so as Cliff read about the man who was going on a journey and on, his, on the road he got beat up by robbers and then three gentlemen came along and you remember them, the priest, the Levite, and the Good Samaritan. And of course, the priest and the Levite did not help the wounded man, but the Samaritan did. And so as he's reading the story that we're all very familiar with, I began to process, okay, Lord... <clears throat> Who am I in this story? Okay, am I the priest? All right, am I the priest? Um, well, I could be, you know, because I, I teach Bible studies and I'm like a professional Christian, you know. <laughs> so maybe I'm like the priest. But the priest, you know, he just, he was too busy. He ignored the needs. Do I do that? And that day I thought, well, Sometimes, yeah, of course I do, but no, on that day, I, I couldn't, I didn't feel like the Lord was saying that I was the priest. And so here came the Levite, and I thought, oh, okay, I must be the Levite because, you know, this is the guy who's so concerned with the law and that everything is black and white with the law. And I thought, oh, well, I, I you know, I, I love to read scripture and study it and know what it means. And I remember when I was a teenager, my favorite chapter in the book of Colossians was chapter 3 because the title was Rules for Holy Living. <laughs> I mean, I have every potential to have been the Levite. And so I, I thought, am I the Levite? Am I the Levite? Well, that day, I, I wasn't the Levite. And so here came the Samaritan. I'm like, yes. I'm going to be the Samaritan, you know. He's the only one left. And so here comes the Samaritan, and I'm asking the Lord, am I the Samaritan? I mean, the Samaritan, he's the one we want to be, right? <laughs> he's the good guy. He's the one who went against everything that culture would have ever expected. He risked everything to help this man. He bound his wounds. He put him in a place of safety. He even paid for the man's needs. I mean, he's a hero. And I thought, am I, the, am I the Samaritan? But that day, I, I didn't feel like the Lord was telling me I was the Samaritan. And I got to tell you, I just thought, well, I'm not the priest, I'm not the Levite, I'm not the Samaritan. Who am I in this story? And then it dawned on me. There's a fourth man in that story. There's a broken man. There's a man who is left for dead at the side of the road. And he is incapable of fixing himself. There's a man wounded by life. There's a man that cannot get up unless someone picks him up. There's a man who can't heal his own wounds. There's a man who can't feed himself. And I will never forget. I, I still get emotional when I think of it. I will never forget when that recognition hit me that morning. I'm the broken man. I'm the one with needs. You see, I always wanted to be the man a giver. I want to be the priest. I want to be the Levite. I want to be the one who God needs. But I'm the broken man who needs God. And so are you. Because of God's great love, we're not consumed. His compassions never fail. 
They reach down and they bind our wounds. Every morning they are new, just like our needs are new. God's faithfulness to us is a reflection of his compassion. And because we are broken and because we are needy, we can receive his compassion, but only if we're willing to recognize our own brokenness. 